Two days ago, the U.S. women just missed gold, but one team silver. Today, two of them have a chance at individual all-around glory. But there is one small Russian that can be a very big problem. Universal Sports welcomes you to the World Gymnastics Championships. The place, the Dutch port city of Rotterdam, the Netherlands. The famous Erasmus Bridge, impossible to miss on this ever-changing cosmopolitan skyline. The site, the Ahoy Arena. And today it's the women's all-around final, the most important day in women's gymnastics the entire year. Warm-ups underway, and for the United States, that means the two stories. One from Needham, Massachusetts, and that would be Alexandra Raceman. And she is great. She's starting out on vault, which is a great event for her. But I got to tell you, she's a rookie. She's not supposed to be as composed, as poised as she is right out of the block. She's been fabulous so far. And there's the poker face story from Plano, Texas, Rebecca Bross. Well, and Rebecca, last year at the World Championships, just missed out on a gold medal, would like to erase that, make it a gold here. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our coverage. I'm Al Troutwig, along with Olympic gold medalist Tim Daggett and Elfie Schlegel. So, Tim, Rebecca Bross, she doesn't have a world gold. Everybody thinks that she's heading toward something great, perhaps, in London 2012. Is she ready to take this step today? Well, you know, she, first off, she is injured. She has an injured shin that has been giving her a lot of problems. It's made her training a little bit less intense, and she hasn't been able to do all of the numbers. But I'll tell you... Since I've seen her, watched her training, and watched her in competition, she has looked extremely focused and ready for this competition. Healthy, what happened to Rebecca Bross on the world stage last year? Well, last year it was right up until the very last event. It was really hers to win. And the unfortunate part is it was on her final tumbling pass on floor exercise. It was really a freak accident. Um, it was going to take a disaster to lose, and it did, and she won the silver medal. Now, the Russians have gone back and rehired a coach that brought them past glory and we're going to see that small russian who could be a very big problem today her name is alia mustafina she qualified first and she is phenomenal she qualified first in the all-around and she qualified to all four individual events she does not have a weakness a beautiful gymnast elegant powerful quick everything you want Ellie, uh, Elfie, what gets your attention about Mustafina? Well, you know, she walks around the floor mat like she's already a world champion, and that, I think, is the biggest key because she is confident and she's not afraid to lose. Okay, we go back inside the arena and see what the United States can do on the vault as the cameras zoom in once again on Alexandra Raceman. We followed her this year, Tim Daggett. We've seen her progress. We watched her go through the camp of Marta Caroli and survive. And she has been phenomenal. And she starts out yep. just as fantastic. She's done everything that this team has asked her to do and to be. And that has been absolutely on top of her gymnastics. Her best quality, I think, is her power. And she shows it off here. Super easy to get that thing around and just maybe a small little hop on the landing. But a gr great start. That's what we've seen from her the entire competition. Meanwhile, at the end of the runway, Rebecca Bross is going through that long waiting process. It's the one thing you probably never get used to. You know, this is a good event to start on. Uh, the same kind of vault that we'll see from Rebecca. What makes the difference, though, is you really have to stick these landings because Aliyah Mustafina, she does a vault that is seven-tenths higher, and that gives her such a great advantage after the first rotation. So this, this has to be perfect in the landing. This kid has been surrounded by Olympic dreams from, since she can probably not even remember in the gym when Carly Patterson focused on gold and won it, and then when Nastia Lukin focused on gold and won it, and a 14.9 for Allie Raceman. Should she be happy with that? Yeah, it's a good score. It's a good score. Could have been maybe just a little bit higher, but, you know, the critical thing for Rebecca here is that injury the shin that has caused her so much problems. And at this stage of the competition, I mean, she's already competed in the qualifying, right. in the team, and now she's in the individual all around. She's probably feeling a little beat up. They've had to limit the numbers. Whoa. And a good vault. She was trying to stick. Yeah, she actually, she landed a little bit bent over. And that is Valerie Lukin, coach of Nastia. So let's see. She doesn't quite get the rebound off the table and has to pike her feet down to the floor. 
when you have an angle in your hips, when you land, it is a deduction and pen goes to paper. We're just underway in the first rotation. As we continue, we'll get our first look at Russian star Aliyah Mostafina. The 2010 World Gymnastics Championships are brought to you by AT&T. Find out what's possible with the nation's fastest mobile broadband network. AT&T. Rethink possible. By Subway Restaurants. Try the newest Subway $5 footlong sub, the low-fat Subway Club. Subway. Eat fresh. And by Skechers Resistance Runners. Featuring Shape Ups technology. In Rotterdam, a 15-year-old making her world championships debut for Russia, Tatyana Navieva. And this is an exhilarating routine. She does one of the coolest gymnastics elements that I've ever seen, and it comes right off the top. Huge air! And it's been named after her. Oh, that is beautiful. Do you remember in the team event, she struggled on the low bar, actually just jumped off. Yeah, that was amazing, and it looked like it was going to shatter the dream of the Russians to get back to the top of the podium, but they were able to hang on. Super tough, super good. A little different than the team event. Yeah. Look at the air she gets on this. Completely laid out. And then she transitions. This is very difficult to go from a huge release like that right into that transition to the low bar. Great stuff. She'll take this right out of frame. Like, like I said earlier, this is a skill that has been named after her. You have to perform new skills, new elements at a world championship or an Olympic Games for that to happen. Okay, we'll wait on her score, give you Rebecca Brosses of 14.7, and we'll see what that means as the first rotation moves along. Yeah, she can do better than that. And now we get to the number one qualifier, Aliyah Mostafina, who's got a little bit of a diva edge to her. <laughs> and a big vault. Huge. And wow! Oh. It's absolutely gorgeous, and it has looked consistently wow. the same. That was phenomenal. She just explodes off the table. And the reason why this will give her the edge is because the value of this skill is a 6.5. The maximum she can score, 16.5. Whereas Raceman and Bross can only score a 15.8. That's 7 tenths advantage. And, and she's going to have that advantage. Huge. At the so, end of round one. Look at that. Wow, kabang. 15.666. That's number one easily. There you see Alexander Alexandrov was coaching in the United States for 15 years, came back. The score for Tatiana 15.133. So the Americans being left behind here a little bit. Now, Romania has also gone back to rehiring coaches, haven't they? <laughs> yeah. And for Anna, this is not a strong event for her. A very weak vault, actually, especially at this level of competition. Romanian coaches, Octavian Bellu, and they didn't stop there, did they? No, and Mariana Batang, they were in charge of the Romanian program for so many years. And Romania really kind of struggled a little bit as of late. But they are back, and I guarantee you, Come the next World Championships and Olympic Games, we will see a different and a more prepared Romanian team. Octavian Bellu said that he could only prepare the girls so much to get to Rotterdam. He said, this is the stepping stone for us. 13-9-6-6, a ways to go. Just starts, starts too low. Her, her maximum score, only a 15.0. Wang Huishuang of China. 21. And she's looked great, I'll tell you. She's got a lot of wonderful qualities. Same vault that we saw from Rebecca Bross. It's a nice looking vault, just in form with the legs and the, in the air and the double twist. She's had some consistency problems. 
in this competition, but the Chinese say that she's one of the most talented all-arounders that they have. Hate to beat a dead horse, but the horse obviously was dead a long time ago. See this little hop here at the end? A couple of those, a couple of those, and the U.S. women would have been able to win gold in the team final. That is exactly correct. So her job is done on the vault. Preparation has begun for the big move to the next apparatus. But first, her teammate, Jiang Yuan. Who was a member of the 2008 Olympic team that, of course, won gold in Beijing. But was nowhere to be found in 2009. She's back. That was beautiful. Super clean. Just a small, tiny little hop. She was one of those gymnasts in Beijing that we fell in love with. She had that infectious smile. She just drew you into all her routines. Nice to see her back. That's true. She was, she was nowhere in 2009. Kind of thought that we'd never see her again. But she has the look of revitalization, I'll tell you. Her score of 14.833. That's it for rotation one. China heads to the bars. The Americans go with them. Through one rotation in Rotterdam, it's a Russian story at the top. Then American Ali Raceman, Rebecca Bross is in sixth. Both Americans have some work to do to become part of the podium story. You know, women's gymnastics goes by so quickly, just four rotations compared to the men. And Rebecca Bross is about to mount the uneven bars. She can make her way up very quickly right here on this event. She has improved so much on uneven bars. Very, very aggressive she attacks this event. If there was one word that I had to use to describe her, it's explosive on this event. And this other skill right here, this release skill is even better. Huge air. Rebecca's also qualified for event finals on bars. Really does one of the best jobs of hitting all of those handstands like that one, dead on. She missed her dismount just a little bit in the team event and stuck it here. That was a great job. I don't think he could be any happier, Our coach Valeri Lukin has been there so many times, but that's what I'm talking about. The handstand positions were extremely good. Beautiful transition to the low bar. That's called a pack salto. See, dead in the handstand. And in the team finals, you remember, Tim, she took just a small little step, which is uncharacteristic, but not here. Meanwhile, we're getting whispers that Nasty has been in the gym and Nasty is picking music. Hmm. Here's Tatiana Nabieva, Russia again. Got off to a great start. Alexander Alexandrov, the head coach from Russia, told our interpreter that the Russian girls have a nickname for her. They call her the Americana. <laughs> Why do you suppose that is, Al? I couldn't even begin to guess. I like the way she mounted the beam with a very difficult skill. And Too now, many. And this one right here. Very difficult. What I was going to say is that mount, I mean, it was difficult. Most of the women are just stepping up on the beam. She actually takes some risk. Oh! Oh, go. Oh. Ouch. And of course, that's a full point off. Any fall, that hurts. Yeah, that, that really hurts. She's a little bit rattled there. Yeah, she took that right on the ribs. That was pretty close to being a lot worse than that. And like you said, Al, with only four events, you have a major fall, lose that point deduction. It, it makes it really tough. Too bad she had a really great first half of the routine. She had some great skills. 
Risky Mountain all. I, mean, I think we're going to see how close her chin and her face came to taking it on the beam. Yeah, that, that was nasty, to be honest. Here is her mount that Elfie was talking about. Very difficult. That was the skill where she actually changes direction in the air. Gives you an idea just how narrow that beam is. And the fall. Oh, oh my God. Wow. Can't really tell if she hit her face, but just bad all around. Yeah. It's, you know what, I mean, the amazing thing is she's probably done something just like that, you know, a whole handful of times before. Rebecca Bross, a little bit better than she was on vault, 14-9-3-3. And uh, Navieva knocks herself off the podium for now, a little over 13. I guess it's an odd combination of being upset, being scared, being mad. And feeling pain. <laughs> yeah. Well, now we'll see if Leah Mostafina can keep her lead. No Russians won the all-around since Svetlana Horkina in 2003. And she's got a lot of Horkina in her mm. with that move, too. Her coach, Alexander Alexandrov, says she's very talented, but she has a very difficult character. But so clean. Look at her lines. Actually, that's a bit low. I think she was supposed to connect that too, but. Divide, divide. That means let's go, let's go. From her Russian teammates on the floor. She just doesn't and make a, mistakes. A great dismount. That also has been submitted to be named the Mustafina. I could have used a little bit more height. What has to happen for a name to become official? You, you have to compete it in a world championships or an Olympic Games and, uh, and submit it in. And sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't. So Leah Mustafina has clearly been the best gymnast so far in the women's all around at the world championship. We'll get her score after this. The women's all-around at the World Championships continues, and the star of the show so far, Aliyah Mostafina of Russia. She's alone at the top. And now we'll see if Anna Porgras can come back from a very low score in her first rotation. She didn't miss, though. That was what she planned to do. She just didn't have a hard enough vault, but she does have a hard enough bar routine, which is very uncharacteristic for the Romanians. It has been their Achilles heel. But she's very good on this event, actually won a bronze medal at the last World Championships. There's a very tricky combination into a release. When you do these things in combination like this, big points. Looked like he touched her. That was going to be my, my next question. Mm. Well, if he did, it's, uh, it's a huge deduction. You know, the first time we saw Anna last year at the World Championships, Tim and I both looked at each other and went, hmm, a Romanian gal that can actually swing bars and do it quite well. It's nice to see. She actually gets better from here. Balance beam, floor exercise, two of her strengths yet to come. So here is another combination. She travels from high bar to low and then immediately back up to the high bar. You see, the Romanians, they don't wear grips. They have these, like, gauze straps. It's Next to almost nothing. medieval. <laughs> don't know why they do it. Well, we never got the view that showed whether she was touched or not. And she gets a 14-6-6-6. Back to Huang Tui Shuang. And she's great on bars. She qualified for the event finals as well for these world championships. Most of the Chinese athletes are great on bars. They have such a beautiful line, and that's what really sets them apart. They do all this amazing high bar work 
not just one or two skills. I mean, with this young lady, she's up there for a long time putting together some pretty significant skills. Beautiful full spin. Whoa! Little, little off and a pretty big form deduction. And that could have messed up all of this that's happening. Look at that. Right into the release. She will we'll make her way down to the low bar eventually. Wow, that was an amazing, amazing composure to not lose it because she was completely off balance. Wow. That could have really thrown off the rest of the routine. She gave an angry look up at the bar. Yeah. <laughs> it's still going to get a good score, though. So intricate, all of the pirouetting elements, oh, and she's just off balance. Yeah, she touched kinda her other hand, didn't she? Fumbles her, her grip a little bit. But she is right back at it. And she just, I don't think she was shifted over enough onto her right arm. Nice dismount double layout. And we will get her score. 15.2 is what they post. Well, in America, you, you on. in America, you hear that the moms take the little kids to a mommy and me class for gymnastics. She was picked out of her kindergarten at three and a half years old to become a gymnast mm. by a coach, chosen. And she does have something very special. Not only are her gymnastic skills beautiful, amazing, if you will, but it's just the sparkle in this athlete. She has such a presence every time she mounts the equipment. She really is a lot of fun to watch. Great routine and a big dismount. What a comeback for her. So she was one of those little girls? Yes, exactly. Who left home and went to the big gymnastic school in Beijing. Yep. Her dismount a little harder than we've seen. She does it with a full twist. Just got to get rid of that little slide of that back foot. You can do that right out <laughs> every morning. It's a great score. 15.533. Okay. Now it's Alexandra Raceman's turn. And you know, she's been having such a rock solid competition. Bars isn't her best event, but she's good here. She's clean. She's been consistent. Sometimes the What's going on here? She's a little bit struggling. Those feet, sometimes she really doesn't get them pointed. And there's another big oh. miss. Oh. Oh, that's too bad. Wow. Just you, know, you noticed something right from the beginning. Yeah, well, she... she. Yeah, that's a shame. She yeah. was all over the place. Didn't know, you know, falling this way, that way, and it just seemed like she really didn't know what to do anymore. It, yeah. And well, with only four scores, it's almost impossible to do anything. Well, this score right here is going to be devastatingly low. And that's a real shame because she has been really, you know, first world championship. She's walked out on this stage and just done her job. Yeah, she qualified in third. That would be a bronze medal. Incredible for a rookie. That could be a red flag for the Olympics. Who knows what impressions that makes on Marta Groley. Rebecca Bross has to move on.
albeit with her shaken teammate. The kid from Plano, Texas, trying to win an all-around world championship gold medal today. But she's going to have to climb a big Russian mountain by the name of Alia Mustafina. And that's the name at the top of the leaderboard, Yang Yuan of China, right behind her. And then China is well represented here on the podium. And then Rebecca Bross is trying to get close enough to knock on the door. And while Raceman's score was an 11.7. Ouch. Okay, now Mustafina on the beam. How is she on here? Uh, she's great. She's great on everything. She's elegant. She's powerful. Right off the top. Very She'll demonstrate, difficult. yeah. Not many will take a risk like this. Double turn. A big acrobatic element. Right here. Perfect. She just doesn't make mistakes. When Alexander Alexandrov came back to the Russian program, her father, who was an Olympic medalist in wrestling, brought her to Alexandrov and said, this, this guy right here, he is your second father. You listen to him, you learn. Alexandrov said, at times she can be a little, a little bit of a devil. And emotional, we hear. Very emotional in the gym. Sounds like a lot of kids I know. A little bit of a break here. She's supposed to connect those two skills. And even and into this that, one. Yeah. yeah. That can be costly. Being tense anyway. <laughs> I love that, how she sticks that hand out there like, don't mess with me. Don't mess with this triple twist. Oh. She's a rock. She, she, literally, she's a rock. I thought, guys, that coming off the dismount, she was coming off at an angle and still did something very good to save it. Yeah, she was. She, she was a little bit crooked on the takeoff. But, you know, she's done that triple full thousands of times. And, you she's, know, yeah, experienced every scenario possible. And that's the difference is when something does kind of not feel right or go wrong, she kind of knows how to handle it. She knows how to make the adjustment. It's a blind landing. That's called an Arabian. Very difficult. Yeah, she was perfect at it, it. Yeah, it was awesome. And we get our first look at Lauren Mitchell of Australia. And she's great. She really is. She had such an incredible breakout year at the 2009 World Championships. She ended up fourth in the all-around, missed the, a medal by a quarter of a tenth, but went on to win silver on beam and floor. Huge success for not just Lauren, but the Australian program. A little bit close to that line and she stayed in. Lacked a little control on the landing. Lauren Mitchell, she's one of those athletes that's always a threat. She has such unique gymnastics. 
She was a little bit injured just a few weeks ago before the Commonwealth Games, and they were held just prior to that, these World Championships. That was, a, that was a great save there. She had to do a little pirouette on that. A little choreography. Yeah. I think her foot was out of bounds without touching, if you know what I yeah, mean. Yeah, yeah, but that doesn't count. Mustafina keeps putting up 15s, while all the other good gymnasts are putting up high 14s, like Laura Mitchell. But that was a strong, strong exercise for her. She came in fifth. Back to the beam. Romania's Anna Porgras again. And this is where the Romanians, of course, shine. As far back as I can remember, sitting in Montreal watching Nadia in 1976 at the Olympic Games and wondering how did she make that balance beam routine look the same in each and every competition. But that's what they're trained to do, and they've been great ever since. And what what they are is so rock consistent. This is very nice. Tumbling. Great. Same pass that Sean Johnson used on balance beam to win her Olympic gold medal in Beijing. What Anna has is just a, a a beautiful flow to her routine. She has the acrobatic skills, but she's also a very pretty dancer. Very bright future, as we said at the top of the show. Vaulting really keeps her away from the very top spot because it's just not hard enough. But she'll be able to do something harder soon, I'm sure of it. Very strong. Three-tenths step on the landing, but excellent job. What I liked about this routine is it just kept moving up and down the beam effortlessly. Skills like this done just perfectly. No questions whatsoever. Very, very sure of her work. We will get Anna's score in a moment, but clearly she's gotten better as this event has moved along. When we come back, the pressure is on for the two Chinese gymnasts to do something really great to catch the Russian. In Rotterdam, Anna Pogress gets a huge 15.433 on the balance beam. And here in Rotterdam, the name of the TV show is Keeping Up with Mustafina. And that is what the two Chinese gymnasts have to do now on the balance beam. And they're both very good on beam. Oops. A little bit of a sidestep there. I think she was trying to do that in a pike position with her legs straight. That is a mixed, missed connection right there. Sort of these compulsory combinations that we're seeing from many of the women where three skills on balance beam is the norm, but you have to connect them. The judges are looking for the body to keep moving in some way at all times. She definitely did not. Right there as well. She just looks a little cautious or tentative. It's, beam is so precarious, but if you are careful on it, it eats you alive. Well, there were definitely some very clear areas where the judges could take some significant points from her. Oh, I think they will. It was good, but... It wasn't great. Not going to be anywhere near like we just saw from Anna Porgress. Here's one of those combinations. 
She spent just a little bit too much time before she moved into that next skill. Really, it's crazy when you think about it. They're airborne above the beam, mm. and the closest thing to it is their head. <laughs> and now her teammate. You know, she said before the Beijing Olympic Games that she she has the courage and the will to seek the Olympic all-around gold medal. And, you know, for a period of time there, it looked like she could be in that hunt. She was doing a very difficult vault. Just was a little bit off. And again, she doesn't need to be good. She pretty much, Tim, if you look at the numbers, she has to be great. Yo, without doubt. And there's that pike front again. Very low landing yeah. as well. It's a hard skill to hold that position. Again, the judges, it's all about the positions and the connections. Yeah, I've seen very few that I would, that I would call piked. Most of the gymnasts are, are bending their knees well in advance of the beam. Remember, she's just getting back into competition again. She went through that slump year in 2009. We're not even really clear what that was all about. Some say it was a mental break. Well, the, the pressure and the tension, anxiety leading up to the Beijing Games when you were from China. I mean, the, the, entire, the entire country was on your shoulders. They delivered, that's for sure. This is a good exercise, but I agree what we saw from Anna Porgras from Romania. There was a fluidity to the entire beam routine. It just kept moving. Too many stops and starts here, but it's good. She has the skills and a big dismount. Perfect form in the air on that. Usually when you see the twisting dismounts off beam, you see some sloppy form, legs apart. Do you think the two Chinese, Chinese gymnasts were better in the team final? Well, they were great, yes. There, was, there were some problems, though, but so far, so far she's been, she's been pretty darn good. And this dismount was excellent. A blind landing, very difficult to stick something like that. Now, Huang's going to get a 14.7, and Jiang is going to get a 15.066. That will not be good enough to catch up to Aliyah Mostafina of Russia. We've got Rebecca Frost coming up on beam in a moment from Rotterdam. One last routine to go in the third rotation. And Rebecca Bross needs a big number here. if She's going to try and keep up with the podium pace. Well, she can deliver that, especially here on balance beam. She is great in the first day of competition. She qualified herself to the event finals. Interesting that the United States chooses not to wear red, white, and blue at an international competition like this. Yeah, I don't get it, Al. It's... Uh... I just think it's it it would be it would be better. Well, a lot of, uh, the countries are wearing them in the team event, but we've been seeing in the individual and all around competitions they tend to pick their own color, their favorite color, I suppose. I mean, look at her face there. It's it's focus, right? She says it's the one thing that comes easy to me. I don't let my mind go loose completely ever. Love the way she just attacks the beam right from the start. Jumps right up there, gets into her skills, and her first test is coming up right here. This is an Arabian, same as we saw from Mustafina. Oh, you're kidding! Oh, oh no! I don't, I don't oh. know that I've ever seen her fall on that. Wow, that wasn't just a fall. Wow, I've seen her fall on it, but it is a rarity. Not like that. That's a full point. Oh, so she was so devastatingly close to winning the world title last year. It was hers to lose, and she bobbled her last piece of gymnastics. And 
I would say, gosh, I can't imagine. I don't know. She has a pretty difficult piece of gymnastics at the very end of this routine, and it's been a skill that, oh. Boy, Elfie, considering what's on the line, don't you think that finishing this routine and how early the fall came is one of the hardest things she's ever absolutely, had to do? Absolutely, absolutely. And this is one of the most difficult dismounts being done in the world. Well, if you look at the numbers the field is putting up, it, it's certainly not the deepest, most successful field ever assembled at a World Championships, but it's hard to envision a night of only four routines that includes something like that, that also includes a medal. Yeah, it, it'll be very tough. It'll be very tough then. She just, I mean, she was... She fought. Fighting with everything. Where, where do you she think had. she was going to go from there? She was trying to do a handstand and just step back down onto the beam. She was trying to avoid falling onto that blue mat. She was under rotated. She didn't have enough flip. And so, watch this. She doesn't get vertical enough. And it's just, you know, it's all over by that point. Just a. A little bit of a bobble there. Look at how her feet and her legs are beaten up. Yeah. And those toes, man, they <laughs> they are so strong. And a very strong piece of gymnastics that came right at the end. All right, this is a key time. You gotta ga gather yourself. You've gotta clear your brain. You need to be like a closer in baseball. Selective memory, loss. We go to the final and fourth rotation in Rotterdam as the World Gymnastics Championship head to a conclusion. In Rotterdam, both Americans have had a major calamity. Moments ago, it was a 14.1 and a fall off the beam for Plano, Texas's Rebecca Bross. She is in fifth behind the pace set by Russian Alia Mostofina, and she is almost a full point out of the medals. We pick it up with Anna Porgras of Romania on the floor. Tim and Elfie, this is one of the two gymnasts that Rebecca Bross has to climb over to get onto the podium, so she needs her to score low. Do you think she will? Well, I don't know about that. Uh... She's had a great competition. She's been extremely consistent. This was a lovely exercise. She's the future of Romanian gymnastics. This will score well. If you are talking potential, you are looking at it right there. She has got a weak event in her arsenal on vault. She fixes that and adds a couple things. She's going to be dangerous. She gets a 14.3 on the harsh floor exercise scoring to take the lead for now. Now the leaders start coming. This is the second gymnast that Rebecca Bross would have to climb over. She came into this round in third place. 
She's had some rough floor exercise when she's been here. Just a 13.3 in the qualifying round. Oh, that looked like one foot at least out of bounds. Yes, it did. Well, Thank one you. foot or two feet out of bounds, I couldn't tell, but that would make a big difference in how much could be taken off. I thought there were some awkward moments. Yeah, a little bit. Let's take a look at this tunneling pass and see where she lands, and she lands Completely out of out. bounds. Landing out of bounds with both feet. That is a half a point, five tenths Tense. off. That, that's significant. Well, that's a little bit of a door opening. And the judges give her a 13.7. They took it. That is a door blowing open. And unbelievably, after falling off the beam, Rebecca Bross is going to have a chance here. Well, she's going to have to be really uh, probably the best she's ever been. Well, imagine being able to go over to her and say, listen, kid, I know you feel awful. You fell off the beam, but look at these numbers here. You can do this yeah. still. Jiang Yuan. is what you call having a fantastic meet. She has been great. Well, the Chinese team is very lucky to have her back at full strength. This was the first tumbling pass, a lot happening there. She was a little unsure of her landing, but kind of choreographed her way through it. But she's got, she's got spunk in this routine. It's 
You know, it's got some nice tumbling, but also really quick and flashy dance. And that's what the audience fell in love with and the fans back in 2008, and she still has that same personality. Fans here like that one. Well, last year, the story for Rebecca Bross was she had the world championship apparently won, and she lost it. This year, she had the world championship almost totally lost and has a chance to win something from it. And Aliyah Mostafina has a chance to really put a golden stamp early in her career. The final performance is next. In the land of windmills at these world championships, high scores have been nearly impossible to come by on floor exercise. Jiang gets a 14.566. She takes the lead and guarantees herself a medal, but there are two gymnasts to go. The first is Rebecca Bross, who fell last rotation off the balance beam, but right now only needs a 14.633 to get a medal. Well, she only scored a 14.16 in the qualifying rounds and she like we've said has had that shin problem and that comes into play on floor exercise all the players looking on Mustafina, Jiang, Porgress, Bross at least a couple of them are going to be disappointed but she is capable of putting up that number we've seen her do it in the past oh, but Elfie they've been so stingy here it's a it, you know what it's, she's in such a different situation that she was in last year. Who would have thought? You're right. This has to be the routine of her life right now. She hasn't had the numbers, but she's a tough competitor. Don't count her out. Moment of truth. Perfect. Wow. That was the best I've seen from her. Been watching Rebecca Bross for a long time, and she has never, ever been better on floor. She actually smiled in the middle. That, that was really an amazing performance. You are right, Tim. She gave it everything she had. Check out this tumbling pass. Rebounds right out of it. Everything was just great. Her second run, super difficult. Once again, does that leap immediately after. Wow, that was, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm a little bit blown away because that was phenomenal. You can almost feel the apprehension that, as she lets out a deep, deep breath. Wow, to follow up a fall like she had with a performance like that. Judge is tabulating, Mustafina waiting for what could be her crowning moment. That's yeah, funny. She's following Bross, and she, she, Mustafina's in the exact same position that Bross was last year. It's all hers to lose. How about that? <laughs> A 15.233 in the land of the stingy. She's going to get a medal out of this. Oh that is a stratospheric number. It was the best she had 
done, really. Yeah, ever, ever. Do you think she realized that right then? I, I don't know. I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. Aaliyah needs 14, and of course, that should be very simple for her to do, but we've said that before. some special 16 year old wow looks like she's been doing this for a very long time and as always it's very hard to read rebecca bross <laughs> but that is a gold medal there is no question that she is the 2010 <laughs> Teammates are happier than her. <laughs> yeah, world champion. Boy, what a what a comeback team. Russia. They have been out of the medals for a long time. They win the team gold. And now they just got the other crown. The all-around gold. And it's going to be Jiang in second for the silver. And unbelievably three hundredths of a point wow. out of the silver medal is going to be rebecca bross three hundredths talk, yeah, of a talk, point talk about a comeback that ne nice never see. say die but they have a superstar in alia mustafina and there's wang she's the just missed kid so the russians are back in the game. They are back. Look, at she's waiting for that scoreboard to change. She wants to make sure it's official. She wants validation, <laughs> but she knows it. Without question, she knows that she has won this title. It's one of those moments, what's taking so long? Okay, there it is. And she's going to win this by about a point. This is going to be a performance of domination for Alita Mustafina. So Russia major players and the first ever gold in the team event and then the star of their team takes gold in the all-around what a comeback by rebecca bross third place and winner of the bronze medal from the United States of America, Rebecca Bross. Well, the best words there are winner of the bronze medal. Correcting the math, Second she was place, about a point away the from silver the silver medal. medal from in the end. China, Chiang Yu An. And what a competition for this little one. And a comeback to the international stage as well. First place and 2010 women's all-around world champion from Russia, Alia Mustafina. You guys, this was really a no-brainer, right? Yeah. And you know, she, it, the look on her face there is, I knew it was gonna happen all along. Well, and she made a huge statement right from the very first day of competition in the team. I mean, this all-around competition marked Nelly 12 hit the Women's routines. Technical Committee of the FIG. 
The silver medal is presented. Well, there'll be another Donna world championships Sagan. next year. First, first, first. And, you know, the sport says, okay, kid, do it again. And she'll be challenged, and everyone will know what they have to do when they get there. That'll be in Tokyo. And then uh, the big one, London 2012. She'll be 18. She'll be two more years mature. And she becomes the first Russian woman to win the all-around at the World Championships since Svetlana Horkina in 2003. And wow, did we enjoy watching her perform? We did. And, you know... Aliyah Mustafina, she reminds me a lot of Horkina. She has the same type of personality. She walks around that gym like she's a champion. All eyes you on wanna her. You want to say it, Elfie. You want to say she's a diva. She is a you, diva. You want to say it, so say it. She's a leader. She's a diva. Well, as the uh, presentation of medals continues in Rotterdam, we will take a break. And when we come back, we will hear how Rebecca Bross describes and puts in perspective what she was able to do here in Rotterdam. The 2010 World Gymnastics Championships are brought to you by AT&T. Find out what's possible with the nation's fastest mobile broadband network. AT&T, rethink possible. By Subway Restaurants. Try the newest Subway $5 footlong sub, the Low Fat Subway Club. Subway, eat fresh. And by Skechers Resistance Runners. Featuring ShapeUp's technology. Well, this is one of those days you put in your memory bank and put a flag on it. So that one day when your favorite gymnast in fourth place falls off the balance beam to get a 14.1 and you think that she can't win a medal. Well, remember this. Here's Rebecca Bross. How does it feel? I'm pretty happy with how I did today. I had a mistake on beam that probably couldn't have been better if it didn't happen but I'm still happy I still got a medal. Let's talk about beam obviously you have a little bit of an injury how much did your injury play into that Arabian was it kind of a mental error did it really uh, feel like your shin was bothering you? I think it was more a mental error I mean I wasn't really thinking about my shin while I was competing I was more focused on what I was doing and it just happened. You had a little mess up on beam but then you had to floor and you just rocked out a beautiful floor routine how did that feel to finish with a bronze medal and just nailing floor like that? I was really happy with my floor routine. I mean, I haven't been doing a lot of floor routines, so to be able to make a floor routine that good for me was really great. Well, John McCready actually able to get a smile out of Rebecca Bross, <laughs> but as we rejoin you here and watching what you all saw, it's interesting to listen to Rebecca sort of channel her thoughts and, and spinning and weaving through what we mm -hmm. thought was pretty much a disaster. Yeah, you know, I mean, but she she's always going to try to find the positive in it. I'll tell you, though, she, she showed a lot of character on that last event. You know, it could have been so easy with the injury, with the fall on the balance beam to just kind of write it off, but... Boy, she, she's a tough cookie. Elfie, what's your summary of the day? Well, Mustafina, how can you not uh, look at that young lady and think, wow, just uh, an amazing athlete, looked like she'd been doing this forever, and, you know, really a true champion. She didn't miss anything, and the question is, can she sustain that greatness through to next year's World Championships as well? And to London beyond. During the break, we were discussing it, <laughs> and when you know someone has it and what it is, but clearly Aliyah Mustafina has it. Without question, she does. Okay, that's going to do it for us. Hope you enjoyed our coverage of the women's all-around at the World Championships in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. But it was clear from the first moment of this women's all-around that her hair just spun better, her glitter just glittered better, her spins just were spun better, her leaps in the air were just grabbed better. Aliyah Mostafina, welcome to the scene at the age of 16. You're the first Russian women's all-around champion in seven years. Oh, the future seems so bright. With Elfie Schlegel and Tim Daggett, I'm Al Troutwig. We'll see you again soon on Universal Sports. Aliyah Mostafina of Russia is the 2010 women's all-around champion. She's got a gold medal to take home to Moscow.